get up from that bed or from the chair you're sitting on to give your all to the one who deserves it most. Hebrews 12, 28 to 29 message version says, Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship. Yeah. Deeply reverent before God. For God is not an indifferent bystander. He is actively cleaning house, torching all that needs to burn.
was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind the heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt i owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time i had hope thank you jesus for the blood applied thank you jesus you have washed me white thank you jesus you have saved took my place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walk right out again and now death has no sting and life has no end for i have been transformed by the blood Bye.
Thank you, Ama. We come before you now as your children who need you. Ama, you are the creator of all things, the giver of life itself. You have made us in your image and invited us to be your children and the heirs of your kingdom. You have likewise called us to be your servants, Lord, and to be part of your kingdom work. Thank you, Lord, using the gifts that you have given us. Turn our hearts, Lord, towards you and renew our hope in you alone, God. By your Spirit, Lord, give us the courage, the commitment, and the opportunity to serve you each day. In the mighty name of your Son, our Redeemer, our Savior, the lover of our soul. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ate Rizzi. Good morning, Reshan. Yes, wow. Naka, uh, nararamdaman mo ba yun, Ate Rizzi? Ang alin? Siyempre, yung spirit <laughs> ng Christmas. Of course naman. Alam mo, ang bilis ng panahon, ano? At hindi natin namalayan na December na pala. Yes. And ikaw ba? Excited ka na ba this month? Yes naman. Excited ako for this month. At malakas ang kutob ko na magsisitaguan na, na naman ng mga <laughs> ninong at ninang. <laughs> Nakakatawa namang isipin yung bagay na yun Pero dapat talagang ang pinaka-excited Or na- dapat nakaka-excite sa atin Is yung birthday ni Jesus Tama. He is the reason yes. Bakit tayo nagse-celebrate ng Christmas Yes Well anyways, medyo napapahaba na ang usapan natin So kaunting recap lang po tayo Sa topic okay. natin last Sunday So last week ay napag-usapan natin Ang topic na The Touch of Transformation, transformation under some major problems need major solution. solution na series so for recap let's all watch this video lahat tayo may sin problem the bible example of this was a disease called ketong in luke chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy the leper described himself by two things May sakit at unclean. We have both of these same spiritual problems. The sin poison inside and the outward effects of sin that spreads out of control. The leopard also said two things about Jesus. Sabi niya, you can heal me. He was sure about Jesus' power to heal. And the second thing is, if you are willing. He was humbly begging for grace, not assuming. So Jesus responded also in two ways, touch and healing. Jesus said, go and let the priests look at you. Offer a gift to God for your healing, as Moses commanded. This will show people that you are healed. Jesus was referring directly to Leviticus 14. The priest had to go out to meet the leper where he was. And that's just like Jesus who left his heavenly home to come all the way to an unclean earth to rescue and restore us. The second thing we should look at is every element points to Jesus. What he did on the cross para sa atin. 
Many Bible scholars believe that cedar was used in making the cross that the Romans nailed Jesus to. The scarlet thread or yung red na yarn represents the lifeblood of Jesus. It's the atoning payment. Hyssop was the means of transferring blood from the sacrifice to the sinner. And there was a clay pot with spring water in it. This sounds like God manifesting in a human body. The two birds. Yung unang bird represents you as a sinner joined to Christ's death where the blood of a sacrificed bird was poured out of its body. Parang si Jesus. The second bird represents you joined to Christ's burial and resurrection, where the living bird was dipped into the water with the blood in it and then released out of the water to fly heavenward. Lahat ito points to Jesus and His great sacrifice on the cross. No matter how filthy your life has been, Jesus is saying to you today, I am willing. Be healed. You are now clean and freed from your past. The great exchange is all about Christ taking our place so that we could take His place. He took our death so that we could receive His life. Ito ang napakagandang balita and I hope that it transforms your life. Tama yung sinabi ni Pastor Reshan. Lahat ng mga binanggit niya sa Leviticus chapter 14 verse 1 to 7, they all point toward Jesus in yes. what He has done mm-hmm. doon sa cross. Kung saan tayo nare-remind that we sinned against God and according to the Word of God, ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Pero mm-hmm. may good news merong nangyaring palitan. Yes, tama ka dyan, ate. At yung palitan na yun, yung great exchange na yun ay nangyari 2,000 years ago wow. when God gave His Son for us.
finished! I commit my spirit. Ano sabi dun sa ano sa video? Finished. Finished. Diba sabi niya? Because Jesus defeated sin or death on yes. earth by water and yung blood. Siya ay innocent sacrifice eh. Remember nung si Jesus ay uh, nakapako sa cross, tapos tinusok ang kanyang tagiliran. Nung tinusok ang kanyang tagiliran, uh, tagiliran reshan, mm-hmm. merong lumabas sa kanya. Lumabas yung blood. Hindi lang blood, may kasamang water. So yun yung nangyari, resurrection by water, which is the Holy Spirit. At lumabas yung dugo na yun na may kasamang tubig. His blood mm-hmm. sprinkled in heavenly uh, temple. Hindi lang nangyari yun ng maraming beses. Isang beses, but this is one time for the rest of wow. our life. Grabe. Kaya we are forever cleansed because sa ginawa niya sa cross. Just like what happened to the leper na lumapit kay Jesus. Okay. He experienced Jesus' touch and healing and he was instructed to show himself to the priest uh-huh. and bring a gift offering as instructed sa command ni Moses na makikita sa Leviticus 14. Oh, I see. So in verse in verses 1 to 7 of Leviticus chapter 14 una yung cleansing ceremonial for mm-hmm. the leper. Yeah. As tackled last week by Pastor Tim. So tayo we are like the leper. We have been healed and declared forever cleansed through the blood of Jesus. Yes. So now after that, ano yung next step? Okay, yung next step natin ay matatagpuan sa Leviticus 14:10 to 13. Ang sabi dito to summarize it up, ang next na gagawin ng leper na pinagaling is magdala siya ng dalawang male lamp at isang female lamp na walang kapintasan along with flour and olive oil as gift offering para kay God. Nang kukuni ng priest ang isang male lamp, papatayin ito sa altar bilang guilt offering. No, ang tupang tinutukoy dito, alam niyo ba kung sino? Sino Russian? Okay, siya po ay si Jesus kasi sabi dito, walang kapintasan. At inalay Amen. siya bilang guilt offering. Wow, thank you Jesus. And according to Leviticus chapter 14 verse, verse 14 to 19, the priest will smear, pag sinabing smear, ipahit, di ba, some of the blood from the sacrifice on your right earlobe, some on your right thumb, and some on the big toe of your right foot. He, he will then pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his left hand and dip a finger of his right hand into the oil and sprinkle some of it seven times toward the sacred tent. And next, he will smear some of the olive oil on your right earlobe, some on your right thumb, and some on the big toe of your right foot. And pour the rest of the oil from his palm on your head. Applying the blood of Jesus means intentionally spreading or associating your faith in Jesus' blood sacrifice to the various areas of your life where you need His covenant benefits. Yes, tama ka dyan natin. At napansin nyo ba na panay right side ang na-mention sa, sa verse? Right, sa, uh, right earlobe, right thumb, right uh, big toe, di ba? Because... Right side represents strong side of a person or the dominant side. It means strength, power, mm-hmm. correctness. At kapag napansin nyo, naunang nilagay ang blood bago ang oil. Oh, yeah. Because blood first, yeah. di ba din oil, this means that Savior, which is Jesus, must come into your life first. Then Holy Spirit can anoint you. Amen. Applying the oil sa'yo means kino-consecrate ka, kino-commission ka, 
ano, binabago ka, change, yes. comfort, yes. confidence, yes. binibigyan ka ng courage. Amen. No, you cannot receive the Holy Spirit without accepting Jesus as your Lord, Lord and, and Savior, Savior first. Even kapag babalik ka natin ang story ni Jesus, nauna munang dumanak ang dugo niya mm-hmm. bago niya pinagkaloob ang Holy Spirit sa lahat ng mga naniniwala. Amen. Mahalaga na gawin nating foundational ang ginawa ni Jesus. His blood, no, which was poured out for us. His blood miraculously makes us clean, worthy, and acceptable. acceptable. And after that, the oil, which represents the anointing, mm-hmm. is placed on top of blood of trespass offering. Savior Jesus Christ comes into us before the Holy Spirit can fill and anoint us. Wow. And just so you know, Satan hates it when you're anointed. Amen. No, your anointing is annoying <laughs> for Satan. <laughs> when God anoints you, it anoints the devil. You know why? Once you're anointed, nagiging powerless si Satan sa buhay Amen. mo. Amen. Diba sabi sa Psalm 105 verse 15, Do not touch my anointed ones. Mm-hmm. No, do my prophets no harm. Mm-hmm. Tayo yun, di ba? And yung pagpahid ng blood na binanggit dito, Reshan, sa passage niya, is what we call the touch of transformation. Oh, mm-hmm. grabe. Gusto mo bang hipuin ka ng Panginoon? Sure. At mabago ang buhay mo? Yes, amen. amen. <laughs> But rin naman ako, di ba? The touch of transformation because... If you open your heart to Jesus and let Him touch your sin and spiritual sickness, He will transform your life, wow. our life. And unang binanggit doon sa Bible is the earlobe. So, why the earlobe? Bakit yung earlobe, Reshan? Diba? Because it relates to our hearing. Mm-hmm. Ears. Mm-hmm. Our ear is also an entrance, doorway to our Soul, gaya ng ating mga mata. Yes. Pwede pumasok yung helpful spiritual food or harmful na spiritual fo- food yes, tama. na nakaka-influence sa ating emotion. Mm-hmm. Kaya nga, we are told to guard what enters our mind and our hearts. Yes. Di natin kasi may iwasan na makarinig ng mga words na harmful eh, di ba? Yes, tama. As sa, ating, sa ating soul, like lies. But what we can do is choose kung anong words ang papapasukin mo sa soul mo at ang best option ay ang word ni God. Kasi ang word ni God ay katotohanan. Yes, tama. Ibig sabihin, what, what, ibig sabihin, meaningful ang ating papanoorin, babasahin, at papakinggan, and ibigay natin doon ang ating attention. When God spoke to His people, mm-hmm. He often started by saying, mm-hmm. Hear, O Israel. Wow. It means, pay attention sa sasabihin ni God sa kanila or Uh-oh. sa atin. No? Hearing God's voice is isa sa pinaka mm-hmm. essential sa ating Christian walk. Wow. So, sabi nga in Psalms chapter 78, verse 1, Give ear to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Mm-hmm. Give ear. Ibig sabihin, lend your ears, di ba? Because faith comes from hearing and hearing the voice of the Lord. According to Romans 10 verse 17, kaya nga nagkaroon ng faith ang tao pag narinig niya ang minsahe. At narinig ang minsahe pag pinipreach si Jesus Christ. Yes. Sabi doon, if anyone has an ear to hear, let him listen. Ibig sabihin, pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And Revelation 2.7, sabi doon, kung nakakarinig ka, pakinggan mo ang mensahe ng Espiritu. Yes. Sa mga, saan? Sa mga churches, di ba? Sabi sa John 10.27, My sheep hear my voice. Wow. Let's tune in ang ating ears to the voice of our Good Shepherd. If yes. we hear His voice, wag nating patigasin ang ating puso. Yes. Kaya nga sabi doon, ngayong pag narinig nyo ang boses ng Diyos, wag kayong magmatigas. Yes, tama. Ang benefit sa akin ng uh, pagkikinig at pag-obey kay God ay una sa lahat, ito ay nagbibigay ng joy sa akin kasi pag naririnig ko ang boses ni God, talagang uh, na-inspire ako 
and nafe-feel ko yung nar nararamdaman ko yung love ni God. And pangalawa is na-develop yung intimacy kay God pag uh, ako ay nakaka-receive ng word sa kanya and nag-obey. And third is uh, nag-guide ako sa way ko sa buhay kasi mas alam ni God yung uh, best para sa akin. Yun. So masarap na magmakinig kay God and mag-obey sa kanya. Napaka-importante ng pakikinig sa salita ng Diyos. Ang daming benefit nito na talagang mararanasan at mararanasan mo. Una sa akin, it gives me wisdom. Ito ang aking nagiging guide, especially in daily decision making. Ito ang nagtuturo sa akin sa mga bagay na dapat at hindi ko dapat ginagawa. Pangalawa, it gives me, it changed my direction. No, inaayos niya yung direction ko. Ito ang aking nagiging instruction habang nandito ako sa lupa. Ang nagiging guide ko, teacher ko in order for me to be in a place God wants me to be. And pangatlo, very personal, naranasan ko ang salita ng Panginoon through my pastor, pastor team. This year, when I plan to visit my dad, na ako lang, at ako lang, dahil yun ang gusto ko. Pero nangusap ang Panginoon through my pastor, na dalhin ko ang kapatid ko. Nung una, narinig ko na, pero ayokong pakinggan. Pero I chose to obey. And nung nakinig ako, nag-obey ako, nakita kong paggalaw ng Panginoon. Nagkaroon ng reconciliation between my father and my younger brother and naayos ang kanilang relasyon at ngayon very close sila, very intimate yung relationship nila as father and son. Very important ang pakikinig ng salita ng Panginoon at surely mararanasan mo ang benefit nito pag nakinig ka at sumunod ka. And yung second na pinahiran ng dugo no, is yung thumb. Okay, bakit thumb? Thumb ay nire-represent niya yung most important part of our hand. So, yeah. pwede mo bang uh, pagmasdan ang iyong mga kamay ngayon? Yung right thumb mo? Ayan. So, if iisipin natin ng mabuti, our thumb is the strongest finger among all fingers. Uh -huh. So, ano nga ba ang sinisimbolize ng thumb sa passage na ito? Our thumb represent yung sarili nating actions, mm -hmm. deeds, uh -oh. no, mga gawa natin. Sabi sa Psalms 90 verse 17, May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands. So when mm -hmm. I say mga gawa natin, no, hindi po ito yung good deeds natin na batay sa ating sariling sikap para maging kaaya-aya sa paningin ng Diyos. Oh, yeah. diba? Hindi tayo niligtas dahil sa sarili nating mga mabubuting gawa. Mm, Pero tayo po ay iniligtas para sa mabuting gawa. No work of our hand can only be established by God's favor. Mm, that's work, right. Ito po yung work of undeserved grace. Sabi sa Ephesians 2.8, sobrang bait ng Diyos kaya niligtas niya kayo dahil sa faith nyo. Hindi yun dahil sa sarili nyong efforts. Regalo ito ng Diyos. Diba? Sabi sa Ephesians 2.10, kung ano tayo ngayon, ang Diyos ang may gawa nun. Ginawa niya tayong united kay Christ Jesus para gumawa ng mabubuting bagay na hinanda ng Diyos noon pa para gawin natin. Yes. So our works, which is yung bunga ng mga kamay or efforts natin, needs to be forgiven Thank and you, cleaned by Jesus mm -hmm. blood sacrifice so that God's hand of favor be upon us otherwise kung hindi to natin gagawin otherwise Satan uses his hand to get a strong hold mm -hmm. uh, ako sa kingdom ni God para gamitin ko yung skills and yung talents na binigay niya sa akin para rin sa kanya and yung benefit na na re receive ko sa pag serve kay God is yun nga, uh, mas lalong nade-develop din yung skills ko and mas lalong napapalapit ang relationship ko kay God. So, if you build God's house, He will build your business, education, and ministry. Amen! Wow, I like that. Ang pangatlo naman ay ang ating 
toe dito mm-hmm. sa ating right foot, di ba? Ibig yeah. sabihin nun, follow Jesus. Ito yung life direction natin, lifestyle natin. Yan uh-huh. ang leader kasi eh, of a person's foot. Not just any toe ha, kung babalikan natin ang Leviticus chapter 14 verse 14 to 19, ang sabi doon ay right big toe. Just like the thumb, the big toe sa paa mo ay ang very dominant na toe among all toes. Yeah, <laughs> all toes. among all toes. Yeah, it is the most visible, influential part, sets the direction like a compass, di ba? Yes. And movement for, you know, for where your whole body will walk, kung saan pupunta ang buhay mo. Yes. Ito ay symbolic or equivalent of our daily lifestyle. Di ba pag naglalakad tayo, usually, nauna yung, mga, yung right foot natin, di ba? Yes. So, kapag sinabi nating lifestyle, ito yung tinatawag nating uh, way of living. Paano ka ba namumuhay, di ba? Ano ba ang madalas mong ginagawa or gawin? Saan, mm-hmm. mo, saan mo ba binubuhos yung oras mo? 24 hours, 7 days, days a week, di ba? Yung, your lifestyle determines where your heading. Yes. So, saan ba ang direction patungo ang buhay mo? Yes, nat napaka-importante na malaman natin kung saan yung kung saan na tayo patungo depende Uh-oh. sa lifestyle natin, di ba? Yes. And uh, as you know, putting blood or dugo na nagbayad ng kasalanan ng lahat sa ating toe represents Christ cleansing or paglilinis Uh-oh. of our life's direction. Amen. Sabi sa Galatians 5:25, keep in step with the spirit. No, Romans 6:4, we too might walk in the newness of life. Kristiyano na ako nung pumunta ako ng Pampanga after graduation. Doon nagkaroon ako ng magandang opportunity sa work and then hanggang dumating yung point na nag-end na yung contract ko doon. Habang naghihintay, nangusap si God sa akin na umuwi ng La Union. Nung sinunod ko si God, Nagkataon naman na tumawag din yung company na, na napasukan ko noon. So, doon nagkaroon ng conflict. Pero, dahil sa sinunod ko si God, nag na ako sa kanya. Umuwi ako ng La Union. And then, habang naghihintay, lumapit sa akin yung opportunity na mag-work. Una, nag, ano ako, naging casual lang muna ako ng ilang taon din. So, naging patience ako doon. Pero, dahil sa... Nag-attend na din ako ng, serv- ng services dito sa SFCC. Unti-unti naging permanent na din job, yung trabaho ko. So, nung permanent yung trabaho ko, binigyan din ako ni God ng grace na mag-attend ng mga cell group. Mga, naglilid na din ng cell group doon sa Saway, sa, sa, sa Gayad, and then sa Ilocano. So, doon, yung plano pala ni God ang nag- nangyayari, hindi yung plan ko. Dahil sa ginive up ko yung opportunity na magtrabaho doon sa malaking company, Mismo ako, binigay ko yung sarili ko, yung heart ko para mag-serve sa Lord. So doon, nabago yung, yung buhay ko. I'm Roslini and this is my testimony. I remember it was September 26, 2006 when I learned about SFCC through a friend. The same year, 2006, I got baptized. I said yes to, to God. Dalaga pa ako noon nung nakilala ko ang SFCC. And nung 2007, I got married. And then, nagkaanak ako in 2008. Dahil taga-banggar yung napangasawa ko, uh, we had to live far away from SFCC. So, that is why pasulpot-sulpot na lang ako na nag-church sa SFCC. Bihira ako nagkaka-chance na na umaten sa Sunday celebration from then on. And uh, nawala rin ako sa cell group eventually. Nung nagkaroon ako ng malaking problema, God led me to a Christian friend na connected sa SFCC, which is si Ate Dang. Nag-open up ako sa kanya. Kinonect niya ako sa pre- present cell group ko ngayon. Iba pa rin talaga yung feeling pag uh, nasa Christian community church ka. I- dito ko kasi natutunan yung yung meaning ng tithing, ng fellowship, yung alam mong may nagpipray, magpipray, nagpapala kasi yun, nag-encourage sa'yo, whenever may problema ka, iba pa rin ang San Fernando Christian community. Now I am committed na ulit kay Lord and I'm happy with my new cell group every Saturday and I am choosing to to attend Sunday celebration every Sunday 
and nilook forward ko talaga na makasama ko rin ang ang family ko. Masaya ako na nakabalik sa Christian community. So, let's have a counting recap, di ba? Mm-hmm. What happened to the leper? What happened to the leper is basically kung ano yung ginawa ni Jesus. Yes. We have been healed our spiritual leprosy. Has been cured. Ibig sabihin, a spiritual disease of sin has been forgiven. Yes, tama. And we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Lahat ng effects of leprosy ay nalinis na po. Meaning, yung guilt, habits, of sinning has been washed from both our conscious you, and sa ating lifestyle. Yes. And lastly, we have been transformed. Diba? Mm-hmm. Sa story, the status of the leper has been changed. So, ganun din tayo. Our identity and purpose has been made completely new. May bago na tayong direction. May bago na tayong purpose sa buhay. Yes, tama. So, for now, no, move na tayo sa ating application. So, ano nga ba yung application natin? Napaka-importante na malaman natin That's ito. Right. Nai-excite na ako. ng application eh. Yes, tama. So, application number one, wag na natin patagalin. Listen and apply the Word of God. Mm-hmm. So, sabi sa Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing. Okay? Hearing. Amen. And hearing the Word of God. And take note. Hindi pwedeng hear or listen lang ang gagawin natin. Ano, we also need to obey and apply yung mga word na naririnig natin galing kay God. That's so, right. In the Bible, kapag na-observe nyo, may maraming phrases like, He who has an ear. Or, or turn your ear. Give ear to. And other uses of the word ear. No, basically, this means giving your attention. Wow. Okay, giving your attention to, by the way, your attention is something that neither God nor the devil will have unless ibigay mo ito sa kanya. Napaka-importante pala talaga na we need to lean, di ba? Ang yes. ating ears to God. Mm-hmm. So, ang point number two natin is be a blessing by serving. Grabe. Mm-hmm. Having a heart of a servant, di ba? Wow. Serve in God's kingdom, kahit sa anong ways, because it's a privilege to serve. Yes. Hindi lahat ng tao ay nakakapag-serve. Pero tayo, we have an opportunity to serve other people also. Yes. Nailapit sila kay Lord. Jesus came not to be served. He came to serve and give His life as a ransom for many. I am a servant of God. This is my calling. This is who I am. I serve not to please the people. I serve not to be famous. I serve to bring back the glory to God. I found joy, happiness, and real satisfaction in serving God. Serving God is not an obligation. Serving Him is a privilege, an opportunity to tell the world that He is good. He loves me, and I serve because I love Him. My work in the Lord is not in vain. He is so proud of me. He said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. I am a servant of God. This is my calling. This is who I am. And this is why I serve. So what about you? Where do you plan to serve? And number three sa ating application uh-uh. ay commit to follow Jesus. Saan tayo magkukumit? O paano? ba? Diba? Be committed in attending cell celebration. That's right. And ano pa? Come cell on. group. Yes. And connecting people to the, the gospel, gospel of Jesus. Napakahalaga na malaman natin kung ano yung mga next step, di ba? Yes, Maganda tama. malaman, ano bang next, ano bang next, ano bang next, di ba? Once na natanggap na natin ang salvation, kasi minsan malaking katanungan yan sa marami eh, na yes. siguro, you know, siguro ang tanong nila is, ngayong tina- natanggap ko na si Jesus as my Lord and Savior, at assured na yung salvation ko, meaning, meaning ba nun ay easy go lucky na ako? Mm-hmm. You know, to this topic, answer the, that question. We are touched means cleaned. To be transformed means change. Yes, tama. And we already won the battle. Diba? Nasa victor's position na tayo eh. 
but it does not mean now we will quit the good fight. We must still fight, not for big victory, but from victory. No, Satan kasi is ve- a very persistent individual. Ingit yan. <laughs> Di niya tanggap, natalo na siya. That's yes. why he tries to do everything to pull you away from God and uh-huh. from that position. Yes, ligtas na tayo. Uh-huh. But Satan is still capable of making your life here on earth miserable. Kung maling direction pa rin ang tinatahak mo. Okay, and one more thing. Change your shout. No, Before, lepers were required to shout, unclean, unclean kapag may nakakasalubong silang tao sa daan. No, that shout was their identity uh-huh. and self-image to mark themselves and let everyone know na you should keep distance from me because you might get infected by my sickness. No, that was the shout of our life before Christ. Wow. No, but now, after Jesus saves you, us, with His healing touch of mercy and grace, we get a new shout. No, instead of unclean, we now shout, I'm clean. Amen. I'm clean. Say, I'm clean. I'm clean. No, instead of saying na, lumayo ka sa akin kasi makasalanan ako, because Jesus is nasa loob na sa atin, mm-hmm. sa iyo, ang sabihin mo, you should draw close to me Amen. because you might get influenced wow. by my Savior. No, When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, natatakan ka na, sabi, saved, sealed, mm-hmm. belong to Christ as a son and daughter of God. And that means all the aspects of your life needs to be aligned sa kalooban ng Diyos. When we receive Jesus bilang ating Lord and Savior, that is the start of our heavenly life. Diba? Kasi mm-hmm. yung tipong kahit nasa lupa pa lang tayo pwede, na tayo, pwede na nating maranasan ang buhay sa langit. Amen. Ang tawag doon, kingdom culture living. Wow. Kingdom life, ibig sabihin, a life God wants for everyone. A life filled with God's overflowing and unconditional love. Wow. Thank you, Lord. A life, a life God wants para sa bawat isa. Wow. So the question is, do you also want it? Gusto mo rin ba ng buhay na malapit or connected sa kalooban ng Diyos? No? Because God is giving it to you right now. No? All you have to do is to believe and receive it. Yes. Na, and if you want and willing to receive it, sumabay ka sa panalangin na ito. Jesus, Jesus, inaamin ko, inaamin ko na ako ay makasalanan. Na ako ay makasalanan. I, am I am unclean. But I thank you. But I thank you. Dahil sa ginawa mo sa cross. Sa ginawa mo sa cross. Dumanak ang dugo mo para sa akin. Dumanak ang dugo mo para sa akin. That's why right now, That's why right now I am willing, I am willing and, deciding and deciding to accept that gift. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. Tulungan niyo po ako na lakaran ang daan na prinipay niyo para sa akin. Tulungan niyo po ako na mamuhay katulad niyo. In your name we pray. Amen.